Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video we're going to take a look at how to mask on a text with uh, some rectangles and the rectangles have kind of got this wavy liquidy kind of uh, noise pattern going through them. Uh, we're going to do it with lots of different colours as well just to make it slightly more interesting um, and I'm going to do it two ways. So the first way we're going to mask the text on with some rectangles and that's just nice and easy and then what we're going to do is do the same thing but from uh, well the exact opposite actually um, and that is we're going to mask on the uh, rectangles with the text. Um, and the reason we're going to do that is so that we can get uh, we can add some shadows to the masking objects. Now just looking at this you can probably work out how it's done uh, but I will show you um, just so that um, we cover all the bases. Okay um, so let's get started. We'll create a new scene and then in this new scene I'm going to add some text. So I'm going to alt click on the text tool which is just going to make some text for me at the center of the scene and then I'll change the alignment to uh, center and middle so it's sitting in the middle here and then I'll choose a font um, Sarah basic and then I'll um, switch over to the black style and make it massive and then let's change the text to say wavy um, no let's not don't make it say wavy let's say, say uh, wavy uh, like so okay cool and um, right that's so that done um, let's now uh, oh just give it a color I'm just going to drag a swatch onto the uh, text to give it a color and then let's zoom out the, the view slightly and then let's make a big rectangle like so. We're going to use this to mask the text. So there we go. Um, now we want a, a kind of noisy wavy kind of pattern on the on the rectangle here, and we're going to use a noise deformer to do that. Um, but before we do that, we should we need to add some geometry, some points to the rectangle so that it can get deformed. Um, and the way that you do that is with this edge divisions um, attribute down here. And if I switch over to the edit uh, shape tool. Um, when I slide over edge divisions W width, you may be able to see um, in the viewport, or if I select it, you'll be able to see um, some points appear. So the little tiny little red crosses, and they're kind of just um, they're indicating that there are points there. Uh, you can't move these around because this isn't an editable, editable shape, that's fine. Um, but yes, there are, there are some points there. So um, now that we have some resolution, some geometry here, let's add a deformer. And the deformer that we want to add is the noise deformer, which is just here. So uh, you can now see that we have this kind of horrible <laughs> noisy pattern on our rectangle. We need to change a couple of settings to make this look nice. So let's uh, check, use normals, um, and then let's up the strength a little bit. Um, Okay, and then uh, we've now got this kind of jaggy mountain rangey looking thing. So let's reduce the frequency slightly so that we get something a bit smoother, maybe like that. Then we can reduce the strength slightly. And then let's move the rectangle up and down. So I'm on the move tool here. You can hit V to switch to the move tool if you're not on that. And as I move this, can you see that the, the noise is kind of, the noise pattern is moving. And that's because by default um, in Cavalry, the noise is based on the position of something in, um, in the scene. Uh, you can turn it off if you want, but um, we don't want to turn that off. So uh, what we're going to do is set a couple of keyframes. We're going to set one down here. Uh, let's do that. So um, if I hold Alt and double click on the rectangle, it'll just clear out the attribute editor and load up the uh, UI for the rectangle. Let's set a keyframe here. And then uh, let's move to frame, oh, I don't know. Let's move to frame 40 and let's move this up like so. And then we have this happening. Okay, cool. Uh, now what we need to do is drag the rectangle onto the text shape and go to masks and then connect the mask and then that gives us this kind of effect like so, which is pretty cool. Okay, um, so uh, now if I, if I deselect the rectangle you won't see that black line so that's just what I'll just hit uh, the N key on frame 60 so that when we watch that back we um, we we just to set the yes yeah, so the uh, set the end frames so that it loops more quickly. <laughs> Tripping over my words today. Um, okay, so we now what we wanted was uh, lots of different colours uh, of this text as it um, uh, animates on. And the way that we can do that is uh, what what we'll do is we'll add the text shape to the duplicator and then we'll, we'll add a time offset. Um, so let's uh, do that. Uh, we'll grab the text shape, we'll hold Alt and we'll click on the duplicator icon in the shelf, which will create a grid, a three by three grid by default of text, which we do not want. Um, what we do want as a distribution is just point, which is effectively point means no distribution. Um, and then uh, that gives us um, that gives us three. Um, three copies of the of the of the text um, and they're all kind of on top of each other actually and um, what we what we want is each text uh, each um, uh, text copy to have a different color so um, I can I can very quickly set something up where they all have a separate color by just going up to the library palette and then going down to create array from palette and what that's going to do is it's going to 
get this um, palette over here. You can choose any that you want from in here, or you can make your own if you want by just going new palette. Um, and uh, we once we've got an array, all, all we need to do is drag the output from it. So that's the output being um, either on the right hand side in the in the scene window or the left hand side in the attribute editor. Just drag that onto the text shape and just go fill color like so. Now you can see that we have um, we've got. Uh, the three text items in the in the um, in the viewport. Uh, however, they're all animating at the same time, but the noise is slightly different, and that's because by default, Cavalry gives everything a different noise, and that's um, dictated by this uh, stagger setting here. So I can I can turn that off if I want. Now they've all got identical noises, so um, um, that's great. Uh, but now we want to offset that in time. Um, so let's uh, add the duplicator uh, UI, I'll, I'll double click on it, and then uh, what we can do with the uh, time offset here is we can right click on this, go add behavior, and then add a stagger. And um, in the stagger, uh, when you add a stagger to uh, to time, um, positive numbers will offset uh, forward in uh, time and uh, negative numbers will offset backward in time, and we want to offset backward in time, so let's put something like 15 frames in here. Um, now. You can't see the other two noises, and that's because the draw order is putting the um, is putting the furthest ahead in time at the front, which means that you can't see the other two. So what we need to do is just nip into the graph here and just flip that around like so. And then when I play this back, you'll see that we've got all three kind of coming through like so. Like so. Uh, we actually have five colors. So on the duplicator, what we can do is we can change the count to five, and that gives us our five colors there. Now if we rewind and we play that back, that's the effect that we've got. Now, um, I'm not particularly uh, not particularly pleased with the noise, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn the noise scale up uh, to something like 10, and then uh, when I rewind and play that back, we're going to have uh, kind of more of an obvious kind of animating uh, noise as it um, as it moves up through the shape. Um, but you can play with the, that to your heart's content. Now. Um, if we were to exaggerate the, here's a, here's a little tip, if we were to exaggerate the, the noise slightly, slightly more, uh, I don't know if you can make this out on your, or actually at home, I'll show you. Um, you can see that the, the noise is kind of, um, well, the, the, we didn't add enough um, edge divisions to the rectangle, and we've kind of got this, um, this stepped look going on with the um, with the with the masking rectangles and um, yeah just because we haven't got enough um, a geometry basically to deform so I can if I reduce the geometry even further that kind of exaggerates that effect and now I can resolve this by adding loads and loads and loads more edge divisions which is um, it's a relatively expensive way to do it because for each edge division that you add we need to calculate more noise. Um, However, we can kind of get away with this if we want to, uh, because of the, the nature of this kind of smooth noise that we want. By instead of adding more edge divisions, what we can do is we can probably have get away with a few less and then go into the deformers, um, uh, add the add deformers menu and go up to subdivide. And then when we choose subdivide, we'll just get a nice smooth shape again. And then I can zoom out and uh, click off everything. I'm gonna hit the F key to just fit everything in the scene. Whoops, don't step backwards or frame them. Play back. So um, now we've got this kind of like wavy animation playing back. And um, yeah, uh, so that's the kind of the, the end of part one. And then uh, the the next step is to do the same thing, uh, only we're gonna, um, instead of animating this text on with these rectangles, we're going to flip it around so that the um, rectangle, the rectangles are being uh, masked out by the text, kind of a like, cookie cut out by the text. Um, and as I mentioned, the reason for that is so that we can add some shadows to the text, because if we, uh, to the masking objects, because if we add uh, shadows to the, um, rectangles at the moment you won't see them because they're, they're not visible so you, you don't see that but if we add some shadows to the text then what you get is where is it second one down you get you get this and that is not the effect that we want obviously we want this kind of effect so um, so let's get started uh, with that. Um, so, but before before I um, I explain this, you, you need to know something about how the uh, how the duplicator works. So I'm going to um, I'm going to explain that. So I'll just nip into a new scene and explain how the duplicator works, and then I'll go. Well, actually, yeah, let's save the scene, and then I'll, I'll I'll come back in a second. So to explain a couple of things about the duplicator, uh, first of all, um, if I were to create an ellipse and then I'm going to animate uh, the ellipse in the x-axis. Let's just, um, whoops, let's just animate the ellipse moving from left to right like so. Okay, so here's our glorious animation. It's amazing. Okay, so now what happens if I grab this and I hold alt and I add this to the duplicator. If I now play back the animation, 
well, nothing's moving anymore. Why is this not moving? Um, well, that's because on the on the top level item, so the item that you drag onto the to the duplicator, so that would be the item you have selected when you add a duplicator, or if you're adding it by hand, when you drag it onto the duplicator, you can add it to the input shapes. So the item that you do that to, um, it's uh, transform attributes, so position, rotation, scale, and pivot, and its visibility are all ignored. And the reason for that is because if we didn't ignore the visibility, then it would need to be on in the scene at the same time. And obviously that's not wanted. You'd have to move it off to the side if you, if you didn't want to see it. And that's just obviously not a good idea. So we ignore the visibility on a top level item. We also ignore the position, rotation and scale. The reason for that is because the duplicator needs to know where these things are. And it's in control of that. So what happens if you have animation like this and you want to uh, see it inside a duplicator? Well, let's start again. Let's make the ellipse visible again. Uh, the solution is really simple. All you do is group it. So let's select the ellipse shape here and I go um, uh, Command G on a Mac or Control G on Windows and that groups it. And then now it's grouped. What we do is we add the group to the duplicator. So we just hold down Alt, we add the duplicator. And now when I play this back, you'll see that this is moving. And that's because the top level item, the group now, uh, the thing that was added to the duplicator, doesn't have any animation on its um, translate, rotate, um, or scale. What this also means, however, though, is that the visibility now works on this. So if I have the ellipse shape off, it won't appear in the duplicator. So because it's not the top level item, its visibility is respected. So just two things to note. Transforms and visibility are ignored on the top level item when you add it to a duplicator. And now you know that, Let's get back into the other scene and you'll understand better what we're going to do when we swap everything around. Okay, so let's go and and just yeah change these things over. So it's, it's really simple. Basically, all we need to do is, is instead of having the text on the duplicator, we need to have the rectangles on the duplicator. Um, but having watched, well, having watched what I've just talked about with the duplicator, you'll realize that what we need to do is group the rectangle because it's moving. It has animations, so we need to, well, it's got position animations, so we need to group it. So let's just press uh, Command-G, I'm on the Mac, uh, but if you're on Windows, you press Control-G, and that's now grouped, and then we'll add that to the duplicator. But be aware, the visibility is off on this rectangle at the moment. So let's just turn that off. And then let's add the uh, group to the duplicator. So we'll just drag that onto the duplicator and we'll go input shapes and we'll go replace input shape zero. So that now means that we have replaced the text with this group. I'm just gonna turn this group off as well because it doesn't need to be on when it's in the top level item. The visibility should be off uh, when it's on the duplicator. Um, so we we've got like what we wanted we have you, you can see if i just hover on the viewport you can see the different um green um pre-selection highlighting for the different objects you can't see the the difference because they've all got the same color so we need to actually drag the color array onto the rectangle shape here and go fill color and now you can see what's going on so here's the kind of animation that we've got and then what we need to do is we need to use the text shape uh, we need to use the text shape uh, which is um currently um currently being masked uh Let's just turn that off. Um, we need to use this to stamp out the um, to the duplicator, which is the kind of the result. So the duplicator is all of this geometry. If I turn that off and on, you can see that. So now the text shape is going to have to mask out the duplicator. So let's just drag that onto the duplicator like so and go masks, connect new index. Um, and there you go. So that's kind of like how to do the, uh, the same thing, but from the other direction. And now what we can do with this rectangle is we can go and add some filters. So we can add a drop shadow filter in here. And then when I wind this back, you can see that we've kind of got this cool shadow and going on, which is what we wanted to achieve. So I can just increase the amount of that and then maybe decrease the opacity just to, to knock it back slightly. Um, but yes, that's the um, that's the effect that I wanted to achieve when we set out. So yeah, there you go. That's how you kind of, um, you can mask things out uh, backwards and forwards, two different ways. Um, and I hope you found that useful and uh, look forward to seeing how you use that technique.